Well then, second game for Eric Ten Hag on the preseason tour. Second game in, second game with four goals. 4-0 four win over Liverpool, a 4-1 win over Melbourne. I won't be focusing on the result itself. I want to focus on, again, the repetitions of patterns that we saw in that first game, things that we built on, things that, can, that we're concerned about from that. It wasn't a perfect game, but it's a second match in a row. A very different sort of game that we saw against Liverpool, I would say. Certainly coming from 1-0 down. Big error at the start. We recovered from it. But I tell you what, there's a lot to be positive about. Not just on an individual basis, but on a team basis, really. This 10 hard coaching, it's clearly working. You saw it today. How many cutbacks did Manchester United create? We played up against a low block. We went 1-0 down early. It's like the worst thing you can do against a low block. Perfect position for them to be in. Just sit there, sit deep. Now, typically, when we played that in, the, in years gone by, we haven't been able to break it down. Today, through patience and continued repetitions of patterns of play, we kept making chances and the goals came. And I'll tell you what, for me, the standout player of the game was Jaden Sancho again. Manchester United, we, all of our threat in that first half came down the right-hand side. And it was all basically because of Jaden Sancho. Good overlapping runs from Diogo Delo. They seem to be working well together. Certainly the link up for one of the goals. But Jaden Sancho is cooking on gas, man. We... we Last season, it took probably until about January, February time till we saw the best of Jaden Sancho. And then we really saw Jaden Sancho. This Jaden Sancho is the one that we want to see coming straight away this season. And it has been a fantastic start for him. He really is cooking on gas, as is Anthony Martial. Two and two from him. Again, it's just, it's the little things. The body language seems a bit different. The confidence is obviously there. Two goals in two games. It's a great start for the preseason for him. I'm not going to get too carried away. I want to see Martial take that into the season if he's going to be here. I wrote him off last season. I think I may have jumped the gun on that, on that a little bit, judging by how he's playing and our how our team is shaping up. But I can't explain that first half without highlighting one thing. I, I said this before the game. I said, look, I've been a massive critic of Harry Maguire. You know I have been. But I've got to try and be fair now and I've got to try and step back I don't have an agenda. I don't have an agenda. I've never had an agenda against any player. I, I kind of say things how they are. But I said, look, I just don't think he naturally suits playing in a team with a high defensive line. And what happens straight away? Harry Maguire's caught out because he's playing in a high defensive line. Now, some of you might be going, Sam, hold up here. He's not technically out. Well, first of all, he's keeping him on side. Lindelof is in line there. Is that the low over there? Shaw, of course, is down here. So he's out of position. So there's space in behind the left back. That will happen so much this season because Eric Ten Hag is asking his fullbacks to go forward. He will want his fullbacks to go forward, leave those spaces in behind because he needs to have trust in the centre backs to be able to cover that space. Maguire does not have that pace. And unfortunately, this was kind of proven correct within five to ten minutes. It's not an agenda against Maguire. It's just the realisation of the strengths of Maguire. It's like getting Fred to mark a six foot three bloke on a corner. He probably won't be able to do it because it's not a strength of his game. Asking Harry Maguire to play in a high defensive line, it's not going to happen. It's not, it's, it, you don't need massive foresight. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to see it. And I've, I fear. I, I, I fear for... I don't fear for Harry Maguire. Um, but unfortunately, my concerns about Harry Maguire playing in that system were shown correct within five minutes. Why are we getting this Andre Martinez? Somebody who can cover that space in behind. It's why we've signed Tyrell Malasia. So that if he does get caught in positions like this, he's got the pace and the energy to bolt his way back. That's what Ten Hag will want from his fullbacks. If, full, if the fullbacks are getting the freedom to go forward, they've got to have the energy to come back. Now, in the second half, completely different team. Uh, again, uh, something that I would consider a massive positive. I don't think the style of the play completely, completely changed at all. I thought we were still trying to repeat the same processes, same sort of build-up, patient play, switching it between the wings, left and right, when we could. And trying to create the overlaps. And I tell you what, again, Zidane Iqbal really is using this preseason to show his quality. Him and Charlie Savage both in that game. And him and Charlie Savage both in that game against Liverpool. Both of them in midfield, different types of midfielders. Zidane Iqbal, somebody who's got that natural flair, but also showed a good bit of strength and, and determination. Decision making on point. Charlie Savage, he looks pretty damn good if I'm being completely honest. Very, very good natural pass of the game. We saw short, long and medium passes from him today. Good decision making. Very calm and very composed in the middle. And uh, with Scott McTominay in that first half, he obviously got the goal that was deflected. Uh, but 
you can see differences, massive differences between how McTominay plays, how confident, how much they, how much Savage and Iqbal want the ball, and how much McTominay doesn't necessarily show himself for the ball. It kind of stands out when you see performances like that. Fair play to him. But in that second half, we didn't have that many opportunities, but we didn't need that many opportunities. And I'll tell you what, Eric Bai, man. <laughs> Eric Bai. Eric Bai. I don't know what to say about Eric Bai that you haven't already thought or said yourself. You know, he's a, he's a masterpiece to watch on his day and he's chaos the next day. Uh, and I don't think that will ever change. That's just the sort of footballer he is. He won't be Mr. 7 out of 10 every week. He'll be 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 1 out of 10. And sometimes in the same game. Will he stay at the club? If I suppose if you're looking at players that can play in that high defensive line, bingo, bango. You know, he's somebody who does have that athleticism to cover in the space behind. He's far more suited to that game naturally compared to Harry Maguire. Marcus Rashford, I'm really happy to see that he got that goal. Thought it was a great goal. Obviously created by the mercurial Eric Bay with a line-breaking run. Great pass to Rashford. Also fantastic touch from Rashford. That first touch that he took sort of took a bit of the pace out of the ball, allowed him to run onto it. But look how awkward that, that finishing position is. A very good finish from Marcus Rashford, and he will need that. He'll need that to build confidence. With Martial going out there, banging in a couple of goals, two and two from him. With Jaden Sancho playing so electric so far in the preseason, we need Marcus Rashford to be firing too. And he needs that goal. Fair play to him. I think he deserved it in that overall performance, better than he was against Liverpool. Uh, but let's see what happens there. I've got to say, Donny van der Beek again, that's two games in a row where he's played in the second half and we've kind of played around him. We haven't really played through Donny van der Beek. I'm not sure. Uh, the jury is out. Not out. I'm, I'm withholding judgment still on Donny van der Beek. I'm not judging anybody in this preseason in terms of what they're saying, whether they're good or not. Maybe you would say, Sam, you're just being a bit of a hypocrite here because you've just said that Harry Maguire is, but that's because he fundamentally does not suit this system. Donny van der Beek, we know, will suit this system. It's whether we see that Donny van der Beek or not. That's, that's, that's the difference, I would say, in the critique. But yeah, I said the game kind of went around him. Uh, Tyrell Malassia, uh, Manchester United today had a real persistent threat down the right-hand side. First half, it was all about Sancho. It was all about Delo. Second half, it was about Chong and Led. Led got some minutes. I like the look of Led. I want to see more of Led at right back. Delo, he's obviously got strengths going forward, but I want to personally see more opportunities for Ethan Led. No more, no minutes today again for Garnacho. A little bit surprised about that. Not sure what's going on there. No minutes for Hannibal either. Garner, I think, is still injured. Uh, so that's probably why he's not been playing. But I think overall, Eric Ten Hag will be really happy and also impressed by that team performance. I think Manchester United, uh, we obviously were naff for the first five minutes and we got that high line exposed. But that's something that's going to take time to adapt to. And you need the personnel to cover those gaps. And that's why we signed Martinez. That's why I just do not personally think that Harry Maguire will ever suit that high defensive line. I might be wrong, but I don't think I am. It's just that his qualities don't suit that game. Uh, Zidane, Iqbal and Charlie Savage, probably the standout performers in the second half with Eric Bai. First half, I'm probably going to say Sancho and Martial. I think both of those were excellent in the first half. Rashford getting the goal. Good confidence builder. Yeah, I'm not sure whether confidence is coming with Donny van der Beek just yet, but let's see. And Tyro Malassi, it's good to see him continue to play. But who was your man of the match? Who's the man of the match? I think you probably... I'm going to give it to Jaden Sancho. Right, Jaden Sancho's cooking right now. He really is looking like he knows what he's doing. And something that really, clearly a fundamental part of the coaching that's going on is the cutbacks. Instead of going to the byline, getting the cross in and just whipping a cross in because there's no one there, you're pulling it back to the edge of the box where the late runner should be, where someone like Frankie de Jong might be when he comes in, where someone like Christian Eriksen might be. Or Fred or McTominay. And we got a goal from McTominay with a lucky deflection. That wasn't really from a cutback. But clearly that's something that's getting coached into the players. Doing the patient play, the ball over the top. Bruno kept finding it in the first half. And then doing the cutback. We created plenty of chances. And that's how we ultimately broke down that low block. Good to see United doing the, playing against the low block and beating the low block. It's going to happen a lot next season. We need to see that we can do it. But who was your man of the match? What's your reaction? 4-0 and a 4-1. Yeah, I'll take that. We're winning, we're winning 21. May as well go and get a suit press now, really.